What is up, everybody? It's time for another video, and I think Sammy knows that too, because he's by my feet. He really wants to jump into my lap right now. Uh, knowing him, he'll probably jump on this table at some point and totally steal the spotlight. Anyway, these guys. Remember these? I did a video on them a little while ago. They're cool little desktop-sized miniature arcade cabinets, and there's many different ones. This one is Qbert. You could tell by the fact that it says it. Uh, yeah, I really like these. They're almost faithful to the arcade machines because a lot of them use NES ROMs, but I like them. I have a nice collection. Again, I did a video if you want to go check it out. But um, did anybody watch that video and think, you know, these are cool and all, but man, I really wish they made them even smaller. Don't worry, they did. <laughs> yeah, so these... Well, they, I guess, could be a keychain, technically, although I think it's a little bit too big for a keychain. These are made by Super Impulse. Uh, I've also seen these branded under the World's Smallest brand. That, that's the name of the brand, World's Smallest. Uh, yeah, these are very, very, very tiny versions of arcade cabinets. And I have a few. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> So I guess uh, if your dream is to have a diorama set up with, I don't know, G.I. Joe action figures and stand them in front of the arcade cabinets, well, there you go. But these actually work. I mean, how small do you want to get these things? Yes, these actually have the full games. Now, because they're on a now even smaller screen, they're actually, for the most part, different versions than these some of which are actually custom made just for this unit here. And uh, don't mind the dust in the corners there. That's what happens when you run a humidifier using very hard water. You get this limestone dust everywhere, and no matter how much you dust it, it reappears after like 48 hours. It's, yeah, it's, got every, it's coated on everything. <sighs> but I digress. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. It takes AAA batteries, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you even have a little voice sample. Hold on, let's... let's... Hello, yes. Hello, Qbert. It's been a while. Which one of these is the... There we go. Little intro cutscene, there we go. And e the joystick is even mounted diagonally. <laughs> the joystick is even mounted diagonally to work properly with Qbert. Um... It sounds like he's saying a legit swear word there. Hold on, I'm trying to clear the level. Don't don't bother me right now, guys. Hold on, I'm very focused. Oh. It sounds like he's saying, oh, sh well, I'll let you fill in the rest there. I don't really know why it has a high score table, because the high scores delete once you turn it off. Uh, but yeah, it is technically a fully functioning version of Qbert. And I don't know if you noticed, but the marquee actually lights up here. Hello, This marquee doesn't light up. So that's just one of the games. Let's look at the others. Uh, hmm. Actually, you know what? Before we continue looking at the others, let me just go ahead and give that quick little shout-out thingy to... Drumroll, please. Rrr, today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Future Ian, go ahead and put the commercial thingy in there right here. You may have heard about them before, but now I get the honor of telling you about them. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. For me personally, I really like the film and video section they have. Specifically, they have a lot of classes about Adobe Premiere, and I've been using Adobe Premiere for years. But I really only know the basics. Most of it is self-taught, playing around experimentation. But they have videos on how to get better with using titles, using video transitions, and it's really, really cool stuff. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, so it's super affordable. Also, the first thousand people to use the link in my description, they get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So you literally have nothing to lose. Go check them out. Okay, now back to the arcade goodness. So here we have pole position. Same idea, takes AAA batteries, go ahead and fire it up with the switch on the back. 
and we got pole position. And I mean, I can't emphasize how small the screen is. There's my thumb. That's the screen. Yes. Here we go. Let's start a game here. There's something about hearing that coming out of this little arcade cabinet, even more compressed than usual. And we can just fart through the track, just like the real game. And no, the steering wheel does not rotate. It moves left and right. It's just like a left and right joystick that looks like a steering wheel. Now, I think there was a way to shift gears. Was it this one? I think I shifted too early. Let me do that again. Come on. There we go. Let's get that flatulation to high uh, high pitch, huh? Ah, oh, well. You get the idea. It's pole position. We got more games to show. Let's go ahead and grab one. Um, <laughs> Let's go ahead and grab Pac-Man. I do like the arcade cabinet work on these two. Let's fire it up. Oh. <laughs> this one requires a bit of explanation, if you will allow me. <clears throat> so, the early models of this, one of them is Pac-Man, the games were actually all stored on the same board. Um, if you open these up, you'll find four jumper connections, uh, one of which will be closed with a little blob of solder. And that blob of solder, depending on which jumper pad it's on, that dictates what game the board is going to play when you boot it up. Somebody on the internet, not me, uh, someone else, uh, had the idea of wiring the joystick to each of those four different jumper points so that you could hold the joystick in a direction and then that combined with turning it on will dictate what game you get to play. So you don't have to buy all four of the little arcade cabinets for four different games. Don't tell anybody I did it, okay? So yeah, if, if you don't hold anything, after you do the mod, if you don't hold anything on the joystick and you turn it on, you get this little uh, like debug screen here. <laughs> Apparently my EEPROM passed the checksum. Woohoo! All right, so I don't remember what I had it, what I had wired to what. So let's see what happens if we hold up and boot it up. Oh, we get Ms. Pac-Man. Okay. So yes, it is playable, but man, is it hard to see. Okay, okay. So there's Ms. Pac-Man, and there's my thumb. Do you see the size difference? Do you see? Yeah, the ghosts move around a little jerky, but. It is a fully functional version of Ms. Pac-Man. It even has the cutscenes in it, too. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's see what game we get if we hold down left. Uh, Galaxian. Alright. Come on, there we go. I think these bullets fire a little faster than they do in the actual arcade game. But it is fully functioning Galaxian. Still does not save your high score, whether if it's modded or not. Harumph. Let's see if we hold down right, what do we get? Ah, Space Invaders. I think this was one of the first little micro cabinets they released. Oh, look at the marquee. I think the batteries are low. The sounds make the marquee go dim. But yeah, it's Space Invaders. What can you possibly say about Space Invaders that hasn't already been said? Fully playable, and yeah, it's cool. Uh, now if we hold down, I think that'll be regular Pac-Man. Yes, it will. Regular Pac-Man. Same as Ms. Pac-Man. Just, you know, without the bow. And of course the ghosts behave differently. Ever so slightly. So yeah, normally if you wanted Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Galaxian, and Space Invaders, you'd have to buy all four of those separate models, but instead I just bought one Pac-Man, modded it, and there we go. I got the four games. Um, on that note, here's the other one I have modded. This one is Dig Dug. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, I do like the, the artwork they put on the sides of the cabinets here. Yeah, th these are really nice to display. I like that. So let's see. If I boot it up without holding anything, 
yep, there's our checksum screen. Um, I remember one of the games on here is Galaga, and this board only has three games on it, so Galaga actually works for two different directions. Let's find out which ones they are together. Uh, we'll hold up. Oh, there's Galaga. Now, Galaga, I, I have to say, I don't like how they had to water down Galaga to make it work on here. Oh, I didn't press start, but okay. I, I didn't press anything, but I guess we're, we're starting. What the... It's in like a buggy demo mode. Check this out. Look, the ship is... I'm not pressing anything, but it's still firing. But my button presses also seem to influence the firing, and I can influence left and right as well. What is going on? Is this part of my mod? Let's try a different game. <laughs> Let's hold down left. What do we get? Uh, boot up screen? Oh, this is Frogger. Yeah. For some reason, they for Frogger, they kept in, like, the old-school arcade boot-up sequence. Not quite sure why, but I like it, personally. Come on. There we go. There we go. We got Frogger on a little tiny, tiny screen. Which you could also put your house keys on. But I don't know if I'd recommend it, personally. So there's Frogger. Uh, what do we get if we hold right? We get Dig Dug. One of my favorites. I do like me some good Dig Dug. And this version is actually pretty good. I think there was... Yeah, the one thing I don't like is the music keeps playing regardless if you're moving Dig Dug or not. See, like, normally in the game if you stop moving, he's supposed to, the music is supposed to stop, but it doesn't do that. Little pet peeves, little pet peeves. I know it has nothing to do in terms of gameplay. Oh, God. It is not easy to do with this little joystick and trying to record it at the same time. Believe me, what? the camera was just trying to autofocus on the screen. The little border showed up on my viewfinder. I don't know. All right, let's hold down down. Do we get a playable version of Galaga? Maybe? Okay, that worked better. Let's see. Are we in control this time? Yes. Okay, I don't know what that other version of Galaga is where we are not in control. But yeah, like I was saying before, I don't like this version of Galaga that they had to put on here. Because you notice how jittery the ships are when they fly around? They kind of seem like they're aligned to a grid. And, you know, I'm used to Galaga being nice and smooth. And this just, it, this doesn't have that same smooth feeling. It's very jittery. But, you know... They had to put it on the screen the size of a postage stamp. So I guess I can forgive them a little. And yeah. So those are the three games that are on here. Same mod as what I did on the Pac-Man. But again, I can't stress enough, I wasn't the magic man that found that mod. I just found someone else who did it and did it myself. And lastly, we have probably one of my favorite arcade games of all time. Burger Time. Got the artwork. Uh, this one, I haven't even tried to take this one apart, so I don't even know if this one can be modded or if it's just the one game on it. Let's just turn it on. There we go. Got our cast list. Peter Pepper. g -book. Actually, it look, looks like slightly higher resolution or something. Right, let's go ahead and start. Now, if you thought Burger Time was a hard arcade game, which it is, try playing it with this joystick. But... It's fully working, fully playable. Just, uh, you know, joystick's gonna take a little while to get used to. I didn't have a finger ready for the pepper button. Let's see, I just wanna pepper somebody. Yeah, get him. Get him with the pepper. Put that bottom bun down. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see the egg. Oh, uh, well. So, yeah, that is my mini arcade collection, although I think that's the same line I ended this video with. So if this is mini, are these mini mini? Are these micro? I don't know. Would you even put your house keys on here? I, I wouldn't, but I'm not one to judge. I've seen some people just rip this off entirely. It is kind of annoying having it dangle. That's annoying. But yeah, I really like these, and I really like displaying these. 
Uh, so yeah, that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to the people listed here. These are the Patreon supporters that allow me to keep doing what I do on YouTube. Wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. There's a Discord server in the description if you want to join there. And on Twitch, I stream every week on Tuesday. Come hang out with us.